This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Foxconn, the Taiwanese contract manufacturer, is getting heavily involved in the automotive industry. You know this, but let's go over it again. In January, it announced a venture with Geely to make EVs for Faraday Future. It also said it will make electric SUVs for Byton. Last week, it announced an agreement to make BEVs for Fisker. And today, it announced it will form a venture with Stellantis. Actually, last year, before the merger with Stellantis, Fiat Chrysler announced it would form a joint venture with Foxconn to make electric and connected vehicles in China. Stellantis and Foxconn will announce the full details tomorrow morning. But wait, there's even more. Foxconn also owns Sharp, the giant electronics corporation. And Sharp is going to make all the in-car screens and components for Fisker. The companies say they're going to offer the best-in-class screen resolution with minimal power consumption. This is part of Fisker's Asset Light strategy, where it outsources almost all the development and manufacturing of its cars to avoid massive capital spending. The tiny Wuling Hongguang Mini EV was once again the top-selling electric vehicle in China last month. According to the China Passenger Car Association, more than 26,500 were sold in April, and through the first four months of the year, Wu Ling has sold nearly 100,000. Despite a range of only 105 miles, the EV has been a huge success since it was launched last year, mostly thanks to its starting price of around $4,400. Mobility is becoming electric, connected, and autonomous, just like the manufacturing world. But we'll always be one thing, a reliable partner for our customers. We want to know what drives your testing, OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing. Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Are electric cars really greener than gasoline-powered ones? Well, David Welch from Bloomberg did an interesting comparison. He looked at electricity generated in West Virginia. 92% of which comes from coal, while a typical gasoline car emits 469 grams of greenhouse gases per mile, a Jaguar I-Pace running on West Virginia electricity would account for 707 grams. But that's the I-Pace. A Chevrolet Bolt EV would account for 451 grams, and a Tesla Model Y would be at 430 grams. But guess what? you can't buy pure West Virginia electricity. It's fed into a multi-state grid, which is not as coal intensive. So the real world numbers would be better than this. David Welch then looked at the dirtiest grid in the Upper Plains states. The I-Pace was somewhat better at 429 grams, the Bolt was substantially lower at 303, and the Model Y only accounted for 290 grams. This comparison does not include emissions from manufacturing or recycling, but it shows that even in the worst case conditions, most EVs are cleaner than gasoline cars. BMW is trickling out details about the new 2 Series Coupe, which goes into production later this summer. Today, the focus is on driving dynamics, and here's the highlights. Torsional stiffness is up about 12% thanks to additions like dynamic driving struts at the rear, while body roll is down due to an increased track width. Particular attention was paid to reducing the amount of lift on the front axle. This was done through a model-specific front spoiler lip, front splitter, front air curtains, air deflectors, a cover over the gas tank and rear axle, and contours built into the struts. The end result is a reduction of 50% compared to the previous model. Options that will improve the driving experience even more include an electronically controlled adaptive suspension system and variable sports steering 
that adjust steering effort based on the driving situation. And lastly is powertrain. But BMW only revealed what's going into the Performance M version. And like the last model, it's available in all-wheel drive with an inline six-cylinder turbo. But horsepower is rated at 374, which is about 40 more than before. All that power is funneled through an eight-speed automatic. The European Environmental Group Transport and Environment is calling on the EU to enact stricter CO2 regulations for commercial vans. It says the standards are so weak that most manufacturers can meet them without having to sell a zero emission vehicle. Based on sales, it says 2020 CO2 levels from vans haven't changed since 2017. Electrified passenger vehicles now account for 10% of overall sales in the EU, but electric vans only account for 2% of the market. It wants the EU to push forward emission reduction targets and is calling for a 100% reduction by 2035, which would essentially ban ICE sales. It also wants to ban plug-in hybrids, arguing that owners don't charge them properly and rely too much on the gas engine. Well, here's a vehicle that could help. Opel is getting ready to launch a fuel cell version of its Vivero van. You may remember from a report from about a month ago that Stellantis is taking a unique approach with its hydrogen-powered vans. It's using the same platform as its BEV vans, but ripping out the batteries and replacing them with three hydrogen tanks. When combined with a 10.5 kilowatt hour battery pack that's mounted under the front seats, Opel claims the van has a range of more than 400 kilometers, or 248 miles, based on the WLTP test. The Vivero e-Hydrogen will also be offered in two lengths and goes on sale this fall. You know, we wonder if Toyota sings all the way to the bank when depositing checks for each forerunner it sells. That's because it's an old body-on-frame design that's powered by a seems-like-it's-been-around-forever 4-liter V6 that's mated to a 5-speed automatic. Yet sales in the American market aren't that bad. Toyota has sold nearly 50,000 units through the first four months of the year. And one way it's appealing to customers is by giving them a lot of options. Get this, there's nine different trim levels available. And we were just in one of the newest packages, the Venture Edition, which was priced a little over $48,000. Think of this like a TRD Pro 4Runner, but without the upgraded Fox suspension. It's got the same 17-inch TRD wheels, TRD badging on the headrests, as well as the ability to control off-road settings. It also comes standard with unique features like a Yakima roof rack and black accents like the badging, door handles, side mirrors, and rear spoiler. You know, we're really not a big fan of the Forerunner styling overall, but it looks better when you tack on all the off-road stuff, which is great because it seems like a decent number of Forerunner buyers actually take their vehicle off-road. And we've got to believe that go anywhere, or at least perceived go anywhere ability, is one of the main selling points of this vehicle. Because otherwise, the 4Runner just doesn't feel or drive like a modern vehicle. But that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone. Solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, 
Over-the-air engineering, boost your game. Scheffler, we pioneer motion. And by Magna.